This is a great part to start on. <laughs> I think this is where you do the uh, invisible potion. Which is kind of similar to how they do the uh, cake. Uh, thing for Princess Peach in 64. Which is not too bad, except, uh, you need a pretty decent timer. Because, like, I guess I could count to 30 on my, in my head or out loud, but sometimes it doesn't feel as accurate. I think I'm gonna have my phone by me just to just have a decent timer. So I think, oh, once we get control Mario again, I think I'm gonna maybe try Prince Mush again. Because I do have a sweet feast now, so at least a decent way of healing, but I guess I could just have better cooking items to heal me. Overall, to beat Prince Mush, I just need to be really good at super guarding his attacks. I wonder, because Super Garden kind of works like counter-attacking, I wonder if you use some sort of counter-attacks like Spite Pouch, if that would actually work against Prince, M Prince Mush. Or, uh, I guess you could have a turn postage, but I'm not doing the pit before Prince Mush. That just seems a bit much. I think it's like all the way at the left side. There it is. I'm gonna assume they made this the same. It's not too difficult. I mean, I guess if you're really bad at these logic puzzles, but I feel like they make this logic puzzle pretty easy. Oh, I like this little music. Place the blue potion next to the red. Okay. Okay, so the red can never be on the far right. Place the yellow potion between the blue potion and the green potion. So I'm gonna guess blue goes over here, or red goes over here. Blue will go next to it. And then yellow has to be between green and yellow. Er, the yellow one has to be between a green and... Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sounding very stupid. So the yellow one has to go in between a blue and a green. So I'm figuring this is how it's supposed to go. Let me check this memo. Place two potions between the green and red. Yep, seems like I've gotten that right. Uh, I'm gonna say yes because I think it takes them all away. This song seems vaguely familiar to me because it sounds like a song that I made once for a game that I was working on that had a lab. Although it wasn't the greatest because I'm not great at making music, unfortunately. I wish I was. I'm only really good at making the programming side of things. And even then, it's like, okay, it's not the greatest. Maybe I need to have more confidence in myself about that. I don't know, when I program stuff, I just kind of do it for myself and I don't really worry too much about it. It being super efficient. First, I fo focus on getting, like, stuff to work, and then later on, I focus on the, uh... Oh, 
working on it being efficient later on. That's kind of how you're supposed to do it if you're programming. Just get it down and dirty first and then worry about the efficiency later. Because if you, it, I think if you worry too much about the efficiency immediately, it'll kind of screw some stuff up. Or you just be so focused on it that you just kind of disregard all other stuff that makes it fun. I think that's it. Yeah, it's green now. That's good. But I'm happy to start working on projects again soon. I haven't really <laughs> done all that much. There we go. She's invisible. I don't think any of the or the other potions, I think, makes her big, but I forget what... I think there was a couple other ones, maybe made her tiny. And also, this assumes that Princess Peach gets naked. Oh, no. You can hear her feet clapping. I'm hoping that's her feet. <laughs> and not anything else. It's Princess Peach... Says she had cake for Mario, but not that kind of cake. I hate this change. It makes it even gross. I like that she does say that she's hiding her clothes. That way, you wonder, like, where the heck did the clothes go? I hate that. I hate that they have the feet there. I think that was added. I, I think he just uh, did the little question thing and nothing happened. Uh, I like this little heist music. This is definitely giving me Sly Cooper vibes. Speaking of which, I kind of want to do that game again because I do have all three Sly games. I don't have the fourth one though because I don't have a PS3. But I would love to play it. The only issue is that playing it on PS2 looks so bad. I have seen that you can emulate it. Oh, I lo love that effect on the carpet. That's nice. I'm going to show the little Mario loading screen. I don't know if this is a reference to a certain video game Nintendo's done. I know they used to do this, I think for the Wii U, or they just eShop, this is how like it would load games. They don't really do that now. Also, I like how these fishes are here. I think they have a name, but I don't remember what they're called, though. It'd be kind of cool if we could fight them as an enemy. Because they're like... Super strong cheap cheeps, but... I don't think they're even referred to as cheap cheeps. I think they have their own name. Her own, like, species or something. But yeah, I would really like to play Sly 2 and 3 again, because I definitely think those are better than the first one. I do like that there were bottles in every level, but um, I also like the way that it's set up more, because it's more like a setup to a big heist. Uh, I think he said drink the orange one, right? Or the yellow one? Was it the green one? Okay. <laughs> My bad, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, the other two games, two and three, they really set up more of the heist and you get to go around doing stuff. But they get rid of the bottle stuff, because I, I like the bottle stuff, that way you can just unlock more stuff, but they changed it so that uh, if you collect enough coins in that game, or just cash, because you can steal like stuff from guards, you can make enough money to... Uh, 
unlock upgrades. And you do get one upgrade. I think they might have gotten rid of it in, in Sly 3, where there's no bottles in the overworld. But Sly 2 had it, at least. I think I played Sly 2 the most. And then probably Sly 1 and then Sly 3. I think I've only been Sly 3 like once. Don't know why I haven't played that one a lot. I don't even know if there's like a a remaster of the three. Sly collection. I don't know if this is even a thing. Uh, it looks like PS3 maybe? There's a collection for it, remastered in high def. Man, I wish I had that. <laughs> uh, so like Sony's doing a lot of their PlayStation games on PC now. They actually are gonna have one on a uh, Switch too with the was it the Horizon uh, Lego Edition? That's gonna be on Switch, which is kind of crazy. Think about it, a Sony game on Nintendo Switch. Like they've had games that are on on uh, PlayStation that's also on Nintendo. But usually those are like cross-platform games. But this is one that's like specifically a Sony IP on a Nintendo console. It's pretty crazy. But it makes sense that that game is on Switch because Lego games tend to attract kids. Not all the time, but I, I would assume them. Big demographic is kids. And, you know, I feel a lot more kids play on Switch consoles than they do on PS5s. You know, switches with switch consoles are more catered towards kids. It's just how their demographics are. <laughs> the Twilight Blade. Oh, Bowser pulling pl pranks on us. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Do I have to talk to Crump? I think it's just talk to him. Now it's interesting that he emphasizes the... He doesn't emphasize the X part in Extremely. Because they're X not, you think they would. Anyways, uh... Yeah, I think that's kind of crazy, but... Uh, since they are putting more stuff into PC... Maybe they could put some of their older games too, because I know the Ratchet and Clank game is on Steam, and I kind of want to get that. Because that game looks really fun. I don't think it'll work as well as it being on PlayStation, because I think, you know, that game is kind of catered towards showing off all the best stuff of the PlayStation 5, with how smooth the transition is into going through the rifts. I don't know how well that transfers well onto like a. Uh, PC. I would assume because I got one playing on Steam Deck and the Steam Deck has an MVME SSD and those are pretty good. I would assume so, but I don't know the full like hardware architecture of a PlayStation 5. Uh, what was it talking about? <laughs> I don't remember. I got, uh, my dad came in and he was asking some questions. Uh, I think I was talking about PlayStation games coming to PC. Oh yeah, because I just want Sly Cooper on Steam, because I don't think it is. They have, a uh, the Crash Bandicoot games, I think, are on uh, PC, so that's cool. But I also want to play all the other, like, PlayStation games. Like, I'm super happy Kingdom Hearts is now on Steam. It's so always wanted to play those games. Well, more specifically on my Steam Deck. Because it just feels good to play games on my Steam Deck, to be honest. Just being able to play games handheld. Better than the Switch. Because <laughs> I like playing my Switch, but I only play it docked. That's how I... I used to play it a bit, but then my Joy-Cons got all messed up and got really bad drift. This is a shame. Because I got those uh, special Mario Odyssey ones. Because I think I bought the Mario Odyssey Switch. And I have, they're just like both red, not one word. They're different colors, but both the same color. But yeah, they both have Joy-Con drift, which is unfortunate. 
And I did like I got like the co electrical contact cleaner that's supposed to help fix it. It only works for a little bit and then it just goes back to drifting again, which sucks. Which, you know, speaking of the new Nintendo Switch, whenever that comes out, who knows if it's even this year or the end of their fiscal year, which that would mean by March of next year, of 2025. I'm not really expecting too much to, from it, to be honest. Like, you would have to assume it's at least some sort of hardware upgrade from this current one. But, I don't know. No Nintendo, they don't tend to value super... Or they don't tend to f care too much about, like, fidelity in their games. And to a certain point, but it's not the main sticking point. They care more about the gameplay... And and that's it. I mean, they do make some good games sometimes. Not all the time. I mean, what's that one sports game that sucks pretty bad? <laughs> that, like, replaced Miis or something? <laughs> and the only DLC they added to it was, like... Well, they probably added some other stuff, but, like, all this stuff that they're adding should have been in the game originally. Because that game was, like, super bare bones. Oh, this is more of, like, a... Pirate theme. Is it gonna change after I finish this dialogue? Cause I don't remember the song sounding like this. <laughs> I like how it cuts over him. But yeah, I've started being very critical of Nintendo after a while. Um, like, because I used to really like their games. I don't know if I'd say I'm like a fanboy of them, but I definitely liked a lot of the games that they made when I was a kid. But I'm like just very super critical of them now, and I really don't expect much from them. Because they have really bad uh, consumer ideas about their customers. Like,. Nintendo Switch Online, I'm not a huge fan of. Like, I have it just to use some of the stuff, but I really should be canceling that. I think I used to use it because I just wanted to have do Smash Online, but Smash Online isn't the greatest <laughs> for me. And other than that, I think I used to get all the DLC for Mario Kart 8. I guess that's probably like the only good deal, because otherwise that's a lot of cash to pay. I mean, at least I think the issue is if I do unsubscribe from that, that I won't have the DLC for it. I'm not too sure how that works. I don't understand this whole double point stuff. Like... <laughs> Why am I just going to go over there to get points? Like, there's much better ways to get points. And even then, they don't even give you that great stuff. Oh, they tell you how to make a healthy salad, at least. That's a good recipe, but... Mm. So again, there's not great stuff about learning recipes. Okay, I think that's what he's... I got all the badges from Charlton, so... I think we need to worry about that stuff anymore. So, are the covers different? They are different. I see. I thought they were different. Super expensive, though. Okay, I'll buy it. Um, I guess I could go check the Bowsers at Miss Mouse's shop. Oh, also, we can upgrade partners again. Chulter rank. I'm probably going to do that next, before I fight Mush. Ooh, we can get another fire drive. Damage dodge P is pretty cool. Do we have another damage dodge? For me? No, okay. This is tempting, but then it also increases the cost of it as well. Yeah. 
Oops. I think I meant to do this. Because I think this is as fast as using Yoshi without having to have Yoshi. I don't know. <laughs> We'll do Eve, I guess, is the other time that we find out that uh, Podly is an asshole. First time because he held the letter of Scarlet and never showed it to Bobbery because he didn't want to make him feel worse even though Bobbery was already feeling bad. And that would have alleviated some of the pain that Bobbery had. Chet Rippo. Oh yeah, I guess we have access to him now that we can bomb stuff. I remember that he did it on Partners too, but I didn't know exactly what he did. So that's good to know that he just swaps ranks with Partners. I guess I can, uh, blow it up. Oh, apparently you could do this. I never knew this. That's crazy. <laughs> and then Mara doesn't get hurt at all. I guess I could check what Chet Ripple looks like. He had like a barrel on his head, from what I remember in the original. Taking a while to load there. Yeah, he still has that barrel. What does he sound like? He sounds like that one snake charmer in uh, Banjo Kazooie. I guess we can blow this up, too. That way we don't have to use tube mode. Uh... You know what? I don't think I got all the star pieces... ...in last chapter. What I will do is I'll go to the Thousand Year Door, but, um... I think I did miss some star pieces, so I might need to pull up my guide to see which ones I might be missing. I know I have access to more stuff because we have Bobbery, but... That's interesting. You get access to the wheel there. Oh, we got the new enemies now. I guess, yeah, after the uh, Bowser and Crump fight. The, uh... Bowser's minions scatter over here. Kind of would have liked it if some of the x knots also did too. Like they all got scattered across all over the areas. Like even like if you go back to Petalburg, there might be some there or <laughs> Bogley Woods. I think that'd be kind of cool just to show how powerful that Super Bomb is. And also everybody's in it like a V pattern. I thought they were going to be all around in like a circle, but oh well. Kind of interesting that Bobbery and Mouse are facing towards us, but I guess it makes sense where they're positioned. Partially Heights. That one's going to be interesting. Uh, on replays, this chapter is kind of boring because just having to skip through all the uh, train stuff. But hopefully they make it a little bit fun. Oh, yeah. Hopefully there's some new gags in there, maybe.
Did I miss anything? No. If you're ever curious, this is, if you ever miss any tattles that you can never get again, they'll be in this trash can. I guess mostly for bosses, maybe? I wonder if this is supposed to be a hint for the, uh, the boo that quizzes on you. Or this is the boo that you told what you weren't going to be mean to. Oh, and he's going to be out here to tell you about the, uh, thing you can get in a hotel castle to rank up your partners again. Guess I'll do this first. I think I said I was gonna do Eve's quest, but I'll just do this first. It'll be the most out of the way, cause then I don't think I need to go to pedal to Hooktail's castle ever again. The reason I'm going this way instead of the pipe is because I think this is slightly faster. I don't have to go through Petal Meadows. See, I'm trying to think who I want to level up first. Maybe Yoshi? That'd be kind of cool. Make him even stronger than he normally is. Uh, Goombella's pretty good if you like doing solo Mario stuff, because Mario himself is pretty broken. Because he gave Rally Wink, which just gives Mario an extra turn to do stuff. Um, Koops is a pretty good partner. Is this a new guy? This feels different. Um, Flurry. Not really worth it, I would say. Uh, dodgy Fog, in my opinion, isn't the greatest. It, once again, if Dodgy was a higher percentage, or if it just wasn't a percentage, if it was like, oh, you're not going to get hit kind of thing, I would totally like it. But eh, since it's, a it's not a guaranteed thing, I'm not super into it. Uh, then there's Yoshi I already said I would do. Uh, then there's Vivian. Vivian's great, yeah, it just makes Fire Jinx stronger, I think. Do I have something I can kill them all with? Not really. I guess I could just run away. Oh well. Oh, Mini Egg probably would have been enough to kill, I think. At least I can get some Super Guard practice in. Yeah, because he gets Bob on Bass. Oh, give me the Fire Flower, too. Also, it did give me a lot of coins for that fight. I can understand 
the curse was there, but that still gave me a lot of coins. I was expecting three coins at most. Oh, I got the fire flower, I guess. Uh, Mouse? Yeah, that's not worth it. <laughs> Because all she does is has a chance to uh, dizzy enemies, I think. Or no. Oh no, she can heal Mario for a max of like 10 HP. Which sounds kind of good, but it's really expensive in terms of FP, so... I don't know about that. Maybe if they buffed it a little bit, maybe it's more HP? I don't know. For 10 HP max, in my opinion, it's not that great. Because I feel like Mouse is so niche that I don't think it's worth even using her. The only instance I could see it is if you're fighting multiple enemies with super high defense. But, like, Koops can attack enemies with high defense when he's ultra ranked because he gets that shell slam move. So there's that. There's also Yoshi you can attack with gold. I feel like they should have done something to her base attack or something to make it even more niche. I mean, the only cool things that she's really got going for her is being able to steal items from enemies. Other than that, there's really no point in Mouse. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's kind of an issue in this game is that partners don't really feel like they're needed in certain situations because uh obviously later on mario gets more tools for himself that he can just become a powerhouse all by himself because all the spiky enemies mario couldn't deal with them unless he hammered them. but then he gets uh, the spike shield and that makes him immune and then he can also get hammer or jump mans and boost his attack even more because you won't need a hammer anymore I don't know how they would go about it if they had to reinforce certain party members to be used. Uh, oh! Oh, that's cool. I did not know that if you jump on an, a spiked enemy, because I don't have spike shield on, but you have first strike. Counts as killing them. So obviously he's much weaker than I am. But so I don't know. I thought I was just going to start the fight. How many shine sprites do I have? Ten. I can do three people. That's nice that they show him swapping it out. <laughs> we are cooking now. <laughs> oh, I guess maybe hold fast we can try with, um... What's his name? Prince Mush. It's a counterattack thing. Is that a different sprite? I don't remember him <laughs> looking like that. Also, I'm probably going to show this off because I think I usually skip this. He might do this pose every time, I just never realized it. Also, I don't know if it's going to be the same, but Bobbery had the most health out of any party member. Which, in my opinion, makes kind of sense because he's like a seasoned, uh, like a veteran kind of. I feel like he would be strong and be able to take tons of hits. 
Hold it, hold it. I think he had like 40 HP. Yep, yeah, okay. Okay, we're gonna do Eve's trouble real quick. Before I forget. And get uh, sidetracked by something else, because. I know that's bound to happen. Sounds of stuff that you can do in this game. Where does this take me, though? Does it take me where the original is? Right next to where that uh, Kill Mango tree is? Oh, they put it in here. That's nice. I guess it makes sense. Does that mean the fuzzies are still there? Because that area gets, uh... Fuzzies disappear because... I guess it's like a safe area. Oh, I mentioned this in my hard mode playthrough, but I think it's kind of weird that they have a, like a persistent smile on their faces. I guess it kind of adds to the creepiness of this area. How they just always uh, smile. Also, yeah, she loves Podly, or they used to be a thing. Another instance of Polly being an idiot. And this is another weird thing about this character. She always mentions being married and having a husband, but we never see this husband unless it's one of these like guys walking around. She has kids, so she, and she's definitely had sex at least three times, but we never see this husband anywhere. It's never mentioned, at least, talking to other people. Like, are you her husband? Are you her husband? Who knows? Let's go talk to Podly and see what his excuse is. Leaving a person that ho who loved him a lot and he felt, oh, I'm just gonna bring her down. Like, no, bro, you are her star. You do see him be sad about it, though. Could have had a life with her, man, but no. He chose to just let her be. Because she's not a star anymore, and she just lives a nice, humble little life with her family. I could have been you, Podly. I could have been you. That's gotta suck, though, thinking about being with a person you loved, and then you feel like you can make it better for them that you're not, uh, dragging them down for whatever reason that you can think of and then um they wanted you back but they never could find you and then they they just move on and how real that is just knowing oh man I fucked this up <laughs> and I can't ever resolve it
because they can't just get back with you. That's just completely unrealistic. She's got a supposed husband who we never see. She's got kids who she loves. Oh, and she's crying. Oh, well, you don't see her crying, but you can say that she's crying. And she's happy where she is. She's not going to screw that up just because of an old fling that she had before. That's a very real quest, if you think about it. Just how often that happens to people. 